everyone. Welcome to the Breathe Podcast, a space of refreshing where you just take a break from the hustle and the bustle of life to just breathe, refresh yourself and rejuvenate yourself through the wonders of God's word. Amen. All right. So um, I have something very relatable for us today. And it's from a personal experience. It shows I have another story to tell. <laughs> and this one is just a very short story that really um, blessed me personally because of the lessons I got from it. So there was one particular time that I felt quite overwhelmed and um, the Lord reminded me and he just told me to come, just to, just to come aside and just, you know, be with him. And he encouraged me to just wait on him, which I've been finding, which I'm finding so difficult to do of that period of time it was quite hectic and overwhelming so i sat in his presence and decided to be still you know the scripture that says be still and know that i am god so i said darcy me be still and my goodness my body was still but my mind was <laughs> everywhere it was in the market it was in church it was in the house it was with elijah in school it was everywhere and <laughs> you're, you'll be deceiving yourself if you say you're being still and you are thinking about the movie you watched last night or thinking about what you're going to buy when you get to the market and so on and so forth, your body is still, but your mind says certainly not. And your mind needs to be still. So I said, oh my goodness, this is so difficult. And I was trying to be still and it was so difficult. And so though I, I, I said, Holy Spirit, please help me. And this is just a side note. The Holy Spirit is the best friend you can ever have. Trust me, he's the best friend you can ever have. So I said, Holy Spirit, please help me. I really need your help. I'm trying to be still, but it's so difficult. And then he taught me something. He said, you know what? Just consciously and intentionally breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe out, just say, thank you, Jesus. Just say, thank you, Jesus, as you breathe out. So I said, okay. And I breathed in and I said, thank you, Jesus. And he said, do it slowly and intentionally. So I did that a couple of times. And as I was doing that, there was just this quietening in my spirit and in my mind. There was just this stillness that was just settling over me. And glory to God, I attained that still, stilled posture that I was struggling to attain. And at that point, he, I derived a lesson from that simple breathing exercise. Because at the point, he said, breathe in. And then I breathed in and... I didn't breathe out all at once. I was breathing out little by little. And then I just got a lesson from that simple breathing exercise. And it's about letting go. You know, the concept of letting go is often talked about. But when it is looked at critically, you'll see that it's truly harder <laughs> than it seems. And people are really finding it difficult to just let go of past hurts, let go of certain relationships, let go of certain ideas. It's, it's, it's difficult for some people to do so. And this is me just coming to your faces <laughs> for those who are finding it difficult to let go what they know they should let go of. This is a confirmation that you've been looking for, that it is time for you to let go. Because the longer you hold on to whatever it is that is choking you inside, the, the harder it is for you and the more you're destroying yourself, the more you're literally killing and strangling yourself. I'll give you an example and how I got it from that exercise is... When you take in a, when you take in a breath of air and you hold it in, you hold it. You say, mm -mm, "This breath is, I love it," <laughs> and you hold it in. A minute can pass. It's fine for some people. A minute, I mean, a minute and thirty seconds. It might seem it might start getting difficult. Two minutes, your body will start reacting. That haba, we've maximized this puff of air. We need a new one. Let go. The longer you hold on to that breath of air the more you're killing yourself because you're not letting your body to, you know, to get an, a, a, a fresh puff of air. You're rather holding on to an expired air. You're holding on to something that is already killing you. But when you let go of that one and you take in a fresh breath, you are, you know, giving yourself life, literally speaking. And that's how it is with past hurts and malice and strife. When you are having conflict with somebody and then you're choosing to hold on to that, to that hatred or to that malice and you're saying, I'm not letting go. He did this to me. I'm angry with him. 
him, I'm holding on to it. You are hurting yourself because you're doing yourself more harm than good. You know, I I read a saying and it just blessed me. It said that when you're keeping malice with somebody, you're letting somebody live in your mind rent free <laughs> because the person is busy living his life, going up and down. But you, you are here, maybe in your room on your bed, brooding over the, what the person did to you. And you're just, you're just sending horrible and wrong signals into your system. And we're going to have another episode that talks about, you know, the power of our thoughts, you know, and what you don't know is that how, how you are, as you are brooding over you know, malice and hatred and anger and all that. It is sending horrible signals into your organs, into your system, into your mind, and it is killing you. But when you're always filled with joy, the Bible talks about how a merry heart doeth good like medicine. It's not just biblical, it's also it's also medically proven that when you are always when you're always happy and joyful, you have less wrinkles. You think it's just about you always um fixing your face in one kind, one kind. It's, 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 it's also about you sending horrible signals into your body. So this is just me reaffirming to you um, that you need to let go of certain ideas that you know you should let go of the strife of, you know, the malice that you've been keeping for so long. Let it go and let the fresh breath of God's word breathe over you. Okay, it's okay to cry. And so people can ask, how can I let go of this person? He has hurt me. One thing to do is, you know, one one um, step to, you know, let go that will help you to let go is by praying for the person. You pray, if, if, if you can pray with tears because you are still angry, but it's okay, pray for the person. Let, let the tears flow. That is you healing. Because when you're holding on to strife, you are actually, you're actually picking at an injury. And what happens when you keep picking at an injury? It won't heal. It won't heal. It will instead fester and it will get diseased. And it can even, you know, be more damaged than it was at first. When you let go of something quickly, you will let the wound heal. So pray for the person. Cry in the place of prayer. Tell the Lord about it and ask for his balm of Gilead to heal you and to cleanse you. And may the Lord help you in Jesus' name. I feel like we should just pray. I'm at the end of this particular episode. Let's let's pray. Father, I thank you for this episode. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Jesus, for your balm. I thank you, Jesus, for your intentionality. I thank you for always being there for us. I thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, we ask for the grace to let go. We ask for the grace, Jesus, to look, to look up to you and to not look at the hurt that we experienced. We ask for the grace to say, it's okay, it's fine. We ask for the grace to even come before your presence. We ask for the grace to be healed. And we pray, Jesus, that as many as are choosing to let go, you heal them completely, that they be better than they were in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. God bless you. Till next time. Bye.